for taking the time um, to come hang out with me for a little while we do a little tour around Lisbon. Um, like Leah said, I just came back here. I was living in Portugal for about over a year and then came back home very briefly. I had to do a document run <laughs> um, and I had to get some documents in place, but I just came back for the foreseeable future, which I am extremely excited about. And like Leah also mentioned, I'm the creator behind the travel blog Voyaging Vagabond, which highlights marginalized voices and specifically outlines my experiences as a plus size traveler and really trying to encourage everybody, whether what, whatever their background might be, um, to go explore the world uh, once it's safe again. And so I figured it would be fantastic to go ahead and give you guys some future travel inspiration so that when everyone can safely travel again, maybe you will add Lisbon to the top of your destination list, just saying. Um, <laughs> and I did a presentation with the Nomadic Network back in December where I kind of did like an overview of Portugal and outlined a few of the different places that I like in Portugal. Uh, but this presentation today is gonna focus specifically um, on Lisbon. So if we are good to go, then we will get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and get this presentation up for everybody. And so, oh, starting it at the end. No, 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 no one peek, no one peek. <laughs> okay. So like I said, my name is Chantel Laura, the creator behind the travel blog Voyage and Vagabond. And today we are going to do a fantastic little tour on how to see Lisbon like a local. So the thing that I found most after visiting here a few times um, and then living here is that I noticed a lot of tourists would come to Portugal and they would always have this very specific experience of what they would do while they were in Lisbon. And it was always, you know, they would go to Alfama and they would explore that area. They would eat Pushtai's the Nata, which to be fair, are amazing and should be in often. Um, they would go to a Fadu show, they would eat seafood and then they would go to Sintra, uh, which is like the colorful palace that if you look up pictures of Portugal, you've probably seen, it's like a red and yellow palace. It's incredible. It's um, definitely worth visiting, but I found that oftentimes so many people were having the same experience that they weren't truly like seeing the city. And especially after living here, I realized that like, there's so many different neighborhoods that are just so beautiful and worth exploring that are often overlooked. So I really wanted to highlight that in this presentation. And again, there are a million things that I wanted to suggest and I had to like pull the reins back a little bit so that we could fit within the time frame allotted. But if you do want more um, Lisbon and Portugal tips, then I highly encourage you to follow me on my social medias, check out voyagingvagabond.com. And that way you can get all of the tips and tricks that you need for when you come to Portugal. So guys, let's dive right into this. So like I said, we're gonna do a virtual tour of Lisbon today. And introductions, we've already kind of gone over this, but I'm Chantel. Um, I, like I said, creator of Voyaging Vagabond. I have been living out of a backpack, my 43 liter backpack for years. Um, and before COVID, I was hopping all over, sprinkling body positivity along the way, along with some fabulous travel tips. Uh, my parents are Portuguese immigrants. So Portugal really has always held a special place in my heart. It was the first place I traveled to internationally when I was a kid. And it was like that travel bug, travel bug just like bit me and has not let go. And so now after all of my traveling, I have decided to base myself out of Lisbon and stay here for the foreseeable future. And then I also put my social channels down at the bottom. Uh, we will be sending this presentation out. So you are more than welcome to click that and it'll take you right to the websites. Okay, so just a few little helpful things that I like to start the presentation off with. So on the left, you're gonna go ahead and see a map of the subway. So public transportation in Lisbon is actually pretty fantastic and extremely inexpensive. I think it's a one euro and 10 cents a ride. So it's really, it's really, really affordable and you can get kind of everywhere. But I wanted to include the map as well as on the right, a map of the neighborhoods 
so that you're able to see uh, some of the different places that we're going to be going to. And so, uh, so I also started, I had this slide in my last presentation when I was doing my presentation about Portugal. And I just think that these are very important phrases that should be learned if you're coming to Portugal. So the first three that I have listed are your greetings. So bon dia is good morning. Botar is good afternoon. Bonoit is good night. I, there's an ongoing joke that I have that um, Portuguese people tend to have this very like sour look on their face. <laughs> they, it, it almost feels like they're judging you because they probably are. It's, it's just like a joke within the culture. But once you, once you come out with one of these greetings, whether depending on the time of day, so like bon dia, bon tarde, bon noit, their entire demeanor changes. And then they're like, oh, welcome, welcome. And then they're like inviting you to their kitchen to feed you. Like it just completely changes it. So it's really helpful to know those, those, those greetings. Um, now fajmal is kind of like a, it's all right, like no big deal. So if something happens, now fajmal. Por favor, obviously, is please. And then a very important one when traveling anywhere, I recommend learning this word no matter where you travel to, is thank you. And in Portugal, for women, it's obrigada. Um, for men, it's obrigado. And if you just want to shorten it to like a thanks, it's brigada, brigado. So now that we have those little phrases, I always start every presentation off with food because I mean, let's be real, like, if we're going to Portugal, we definitely want to eat because Portuguese food is just incredible. So what I did here on this first slide are a few places that are kind of touristy, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I know we're looking for the local experience, but I just wanted to include them because I think that they are really fantastic restaurants if you are looking for these, these different kind of cuisines. And so I have this, um, this beer hall, Trinidad. It used to be a former convent and it it's I wrote yeah it's 182 years old so like it survived the earthquake that happened in Portugal it survived the fires it survived the dictatorship regime and it honestly one the decor is incredible the building itself is stunning and it's just these beautiful dome ceilings with tile work all along you have monks that are serving you but as you can also tell the menu is absolutely incredible judging from this picture you see here on the left and then I wanted to include a very popular breakfast spot because a lot of people will reach out to me and say you know like where can I get a good breakfast meal in Portugal and so I included this restaurant here dear breakfast and there it's Whatever you get, I can guarantee you it's going to be fantastic. However, I, again, because it is a little bit on the touristy side, it is on a lot of people's radars. If you do intend to go on the weekend, it is going to be packed. You are going to have to wait. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to plan out your day. And then the last place I have is Hamiru, which is this iconic seafood restaurant. Like if, if, if you talk to nearly anybody and they're gonna recommend a seafood restaurant for you to try, it's always this cafe. And it was even once visited by Anthony Bourdain. So yes, I'm sure you're telling, you're thinking to yourself, Chantal, this is extremely <laughs> touristy, but the locals swear by it. And they really say that it's the spot to go if you want really fresh seafood and you want like really hearty portions. So like if you are visiting and you just wanna go crazy on some Portuguese seafood, then this is where you need to be. And then I, all, I have found since living here that there's so many different kinds of regional fairs that you can get when it comes to food. I grew up with immigrants. So like Portuguese food was a staple growing up and, you know, coming to Portugal, I wanted to eat Portuguese food nonstop, but there's so many different culinary skills being used here and so many different talented chefs that are doing really unique things that I thought it would be really important to include some things that are a little bit, you know, outside of the trad traditional Portuguese food. So the first one that I have is Mercado Oriental. And what that is, is it's a building in Martim Moniz, which is um, pretty close to Basha Chiado. And on the bottom portion is an actual Asian market. So you can get a bunch of different Asian goods. Their produce is insanely cheap. I go all the time to buy my produce. But then on the upper portion of the building, you have various small stalls. And each one is specializing like a different regional fair. So you have like South Korean food, you have Vietnamese food, you have Japanese food, you have um, 
oh, excuse me, <laughs> you have uh, Thai food, like they really offer everything. So if you really do want to try out some fantastic Asian food while in Lisbon, it's worth checking out. It's a really cool spot. Um, definitely a local favorite. And then I also here in the middle have Cafe Peran, which specializes in Middle Eastern food. Uh, I had a friend recommend it to me. And right before I left for the States, I went and checked it out. And honestly, every time she brought a plate to the menu, my, excuse me, she brought a plate to the table, my jaw would just drop because it just looked so colorful and so fresh. And it was one of my favorite meals that I've had here in Lisbon. And so I recommend it to everybody. You know, if you want to try some really fantastic Middle Eastern food, this is the place to do it. And not only that, it has outdoor seating that is along one of the prettiest plazas in Lisbon, which is a Plaza de Flores, which stands for Plaza of Flowers. And it's really, it's really a beautiful spot to just relax. And so if you just want like a nice relaxing meal, then definitely go here. And then the last place that I've included is my favorite spot. Um, I frequent here very often. It's called Crispy Mafia. And I, I put here that you'll hear the hip hop before you walk through the door. You'll actually hear the hip hop as soon as you turn onto the street. Um, but it's like a cozy little local spot where you can get a fried chicken fix. And you can also just like have a cold one with your friends outside. It's very popular with the locals. And if you want like a really unique experience, then definitely check that out. And then not only are we including what to eat, because let's be real, we also want a cold brew after the end of the day or like a cold drink, anything. I included three different options on where you could go if you were looking for somewhere to like have a drink. Uh, number one being kiosks. So kiosks are all over Portugal. They're these small little kiosks that you see here on the left side and they'll have tables set up on the, um, around it. And it's pretty, it's pretty much standard that you meet up with a friend at the end of the day and you have a drink or you meet up for lunch with a friend and you just sit at, at, at a kiosk and just, you know, relax and people watch and talk to your friends. Like it is as Portuguese as Portuguese gets. Um, they just reopened the kiosks here after, after they had a second quarantine and people were going out of their minds. Like they were just so excited to have those open again. And so if you do come, I highly recommend you have that experience because it is like an authentic local experience. Just, you know, spend a little time at the kiosk. And then the place we have in the middle is Agua Nubiku. So this is the, this is the bar. I, it's not so much a bar, it's more a restaurant, but they also uh, have drinks, but it's this beautiful open courtyard and it's really inexpensive. They also offer vegetarian and vegan food. And this is the place that like when I have friends come to visit me in the city, this is where I take them. Uh, it's just a really incredible spot, light, airy, um, super breezy, which is a blessing in the summer. And it also has, so this picture that I've included is actually um, a portrait done by a really popular street artist here in Lisbon called Vils. And what he'll do is he'll use like jackhammers and dynamite to um, create port portraits of prominent or like well-known uh, Portuguese figures. So this por portrait in particular, I only just recently found out who it was. I, I genuinely had no idea and then I asked and they told me that this portrait is of a man who used to be a security guard, like standing out like a bouncer at a very popular local bar. And when he died, Vils created this portrait uh, to kind of memorialize, um, to kind of honor him, which I thought is just fantastic and just like a really unique way to kind of like you know appreciate the community and the different people in there and then the last place that I have is holy wine it's so I wrote here when hole in the wall is the most literal way to describe it because it is literally the size of a large closet um I had a friend show it to me it's female owned it's a really cool spot with some really fantastic wine the woman that owns it is extremely knowledgeable and you get your glass of wine and then you just go sit on the sidewalk right outside and like there's little seats and you'll, you'll walk by and you'll just see people just like hanging out on a nice day. And so it's just a really fun spot to go. And then we have last but not least for food and drinks, sweet treats to indulge in. This is something that people always reach out to me. They're like, we love Pashtai's the Nata, but what else do you recommend for sweet treats? So I have here chocolate cake. I found out maybe August of last year that the best chocolate cake in the world was in Lisbon. And it was in a location that I had been to a million times, but I've walked by. 
And I personally, <laughs> once I found that out, I, I nearly ran to go get it. And it was incredible. It is, it is, it's called the best chocolate cake in the world on quite a few different food blogs and um, food magazine publications. And it's easy to see why it really is fantastic. And then um, push size the Napa. I know I mention this all the time, but again, it's like an iconic part of Portuguese culture. And most people, when they come, they head to push size the Belém, which is where these were originated. And like, if you go to Belém and you go to this shop in the summer, you'll see it. It's just a line down the street. It's just absolutely crazy. And so like, from one perspective, I understand people wanting to go where it originated. But if we're talking from a local perspective, nobody is going there. Um, oftentimes, they'll go to Mantegaria or Fabrica de Nata, which is two popular um, Portuguese chains that specialize in creating Pashtai de Nata. Like that's all they really do. And they might have lunch, but like that's what people go for. And then I also wanted to include this fun little detail. If you're looking for vegan fresh thighs, like if you if you are vegan and you really want to try this, I just found a cafe that serves vegan fresh thighs and it's called Akarioka. And that's included right here at the bottom. So if that is something you're interested to, you can go ahead and jot that down. And then the last thing I'm recommending is Italian gelato, which you think you would think Portugal, you're like, mm, really? But there is a spot here in Lisbon called Nanarella Nana, Nana and every time I walked by the line is down the street and I was like <clears throat> one day I was like you know what I'm finally gonna try it like I'm gonna wait in line and it was incredible I've <laughs> so I tried it last week I've been back four times already and I have no shame in saying that and so if you need like a sweet little tree on a hot day then you have to go to this spot it is the best place to check out Okay, and then we're getting right into it, guys. So how to get to the beaches. Like, let's be real, we're coming to Portugal. We have some of the nicest beaches in the world. How do we get to them? And so I included some beaches that I really enjoy going to and how to get there. So this one here in Sesimbra is a 40 minute car ride. You can take an Uber. Uber is very inexpensive here, totally doable. Um, but then, what happens is, is the Uber will drop you off at the top of a trail, which at the time I did not know. <laughs> I thought we were going to get dropped off at the beach and then, you know, walk down a few stairs and then I was at the beach. So I came in like a sundress and like nice sandals and like white frame sunglasses, was very ill prepared for this hour long hike down a cliffside that I realized we would have to do to get to the beach. Um, However, if that does not sound ideal for you, it certainly did not sound ideal for me while I was doing it. Uh, there is a small little motorboat ferry that will take you to and from the beach. And I put the location on where you can pick that up. I don't know the exact location. Um, be I just know that it's by the docks over by this Naval Club in Sesembra. So even if you get dropped off there and you just ask somebody, they'll be able to point you in the direction of how to get to that beach and where the ferry is to take it. And I think it was maybe like five euros each way. So 10 euros total to go there and back, which, you know, you can weigh out whether or not that's beneficial for you, whether or not that's cost effective for you. But if, you know, you are trying to avoid that hike, whether it be for accessibility reasons, or you just don't feel like hiking that day, there is an option to get to the beach. And then I also have Praia de Santo Antonio, which is in Costa de Caparica. So Costa de Caparica is like this super long stretch of beach that's right over the bridge in Lisbon. So it's about a 20 minute car ride. Again, can be taken with an Uber, super inexpensive. I think it costs less than 20 euros. So if you're going with a few people, you guys can split it. There's also a really nice boardwalk that you can, that you'll see people are like longboarding down, they're bike riding, you can stroll and you can just walk all along that. And there's plenty of beach. So if you're concerned about social distancing, like you, that can absolutely happen here. There's also a really fantastic restaurant there called uh, Dr. Bernard's. And it's like this really colorful building that has like, it's completely open. I just went for the first time um, last Monday and it totally gave me like California beach vibes. So if you just want like a little place to unwind, that's the place to do it. And then last but not least, when we're talking about beaches, 
we also have um, a train, it's called the Qashqai's line and it picks up in the in city center and then it goes all the way down to Qashqai's which is like just about just about an hour but all along that route it's it rides the coastline so it stops at all of the major spots that you would find the beaches at so I think I haven't taken the train since last year I want to say the ride is about three euros to go all the way to the end to Qashqai's um but you literally have your pick of the litter. So you can nearly stop off at almost all, any of the stops and walk to a beach. And depending on which stop you do get off at, there are going to be more people. So like Estoril literally is right on top of the beach. So you come out of the train, you go down a set of stairs and you're at the beach. That one's always really popular because of how easy it is to get to. Same thing with Qashqai's, but you know, there's great beaches along Parede. Um, and yeah, you have a ton of different options when it comes to that train line. And again, super inexpensive, really easy to navigate, beautiful ride. So if you wanna to go to the beaches, those are your options. Okay, now guys, let's talk Saturday markets. So Saturday markets are honestly like as Portuguese as Portuguese gets. Like it's not just like, oh, we're going to the market because we need to get a, new, get a few things. It's like a whole event so like you'll see you'll see people there gossiping you'll see friends catching up um and you really you really do get a sense of like this is the community coming together to like support these vendors and so I wanted to go ahead and include some of my favorite markets so Santos Collective is um a really nice outdoor market that has been popping up lately that offers treats and refreshments in addition to all of the different things that they sell and then you have Jardim do Principal Real which is a beautiful garden worth checking out, even if it's not for a Saturday market. But if you do go, they, they have a bunch of different goods, um, a couple of different food options. And the last Saturday of every month, they also have like vintage clothes that you can go and check out. And then um, I always mess this word up, so bear with me, but Fiera de Ladra, which is basically thieves market. So it's one of the oldest markets in Lisbon. And it operates on Saturdays and Tuesdays. It's the two pictures that you see here on the right. And you can find pretty much anything. Like the, the, the market itself is massive. And so you can find books, CDs, clothes, shoes, accessories, old cameras, like religious figures. Like you can find old tiles. Like you can really find anything there. Um, and again, it does, it does operate Saturday to Tuesday. They say from dawn to dusk. But usually with most of these markets, after one o'clock, they start to break down. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to plan your day. And then we have some fo different photo spots. So um, I'll go through a few of these a little quickly because again, like I know we don't have a ton of time. Um, so I, I let me first say that if you come to Lisbon, the entire city is so photogenic. Like I have been living here for now over a year and I still like when I walk outside my front door I'm still completely blown away every single time and it's just an absolutely incredibly beautiful city and so everywhere you go is kind of a photo spot but I wanted to bring this up because I know a lot of people will typically just stick to the Alfama area which is absolutely stunning and one of the most beautiful neighborhoods that is in Lisbon but I just wanted to maybe suggest some different things so that you could get like a different perspective. And so uh, the first one I have is the paved path um, along the Teju. So there is like a long path again, where like you'll see a lot of people bike riding or riding scooters or just walk, going for a walk. And that's actually where this top picture is taken. It's a really nice place to get a fantastic shot of the bridge. So if you want like a really beautiful shot with the bridge in the background, then like this is where you need to go. Um, Rua Verde is uh, Green Street in Santa Catarina. This is the, the, the most bottom picture here on the left-hand side. It is covered in plants, absolutely covered in plants. And if you're like a total plant nerd like me, it is just one of the most stunning streets in the city. It is often taken pictures of, I see filming on there all the time. And it really is just such a beautiful spot in the city that a lot of people overlook. So if you are coming and you really wanna see like a really pretty street, then definitely head here. And then uh, Hua de Bica is uh, 
So I'm sure most of you know about the yellow tram in Lisbon. Super iconic. Everyone loves it. Do not ride it in the summer because there's so many people on it. It is not the best experience. Um, I say that jokingly. But on this particular street, there is always a tram parked at the top. So I know a ton of people want to come and they want, you know, that picture of them hanging off the tram, skirt flowing in the wind, hair blowing in the wind. And so rather than chasing all over the city to try to find this tram and get that shot, here there's always one park there. So you can just like pop over, take your picture, walk. I would recommend walking down the street. Um, you'll see this middle picture. That's like a bottom view of it. And personally, I just think it's a really beautiful street that's um, worth checking out. And then LX Factory has a ton of different photo spots that are worth seeing. Village Underground Lisboa, which is right next to LX Factory, is this really unique building that's um, a bunch of shipping containers placed to over together. And there's like restaurants in there and each are painted a different way. So it's really unique, really cool to see. And then I have uh, Miradoro de Santa Lu Luzia, which is the most popular Miradoro hands down in Lisbon. And like, I'm gonna be honest, as touristy as it gets. However, that being said, the reason it's so popular is because it is so beautiful. It is just absolutely stunning. You have all the azulejos, which is the different tile work. And then you have these beautiful fuchsia flowers growing right next to it. And this beautiful veranda, like it is just absolutely stunning. But I'm going to give you an insider tip. It is also one of the best places to see a sunrise in Lisbon. And nobody is there. Like nobody is there during a sunrise. And if you get like a really clear morning, it is one of the most beautiful experiences to have. So, you know, if any of you are early risers and you do really want to see a spectacular sunset, then this is where to do it at this Mira Luru. So another thing that's really big here in, um, in Portugal is vintage shopping. And, excuse me. And so, and people are really aware of, you know, being conscious and, you know, kind of going against fast fashion. Of course we have major brands here like H&M, Zara and all that. But a lot of people are really heading towards vintage shops. And I think it's a really uh, fantastic way, like if you do want a local experience to kind of pop into these different shops that I've listed here. Again, it's a really stylish city to begin with. So you'll find some, some, some serious gems at a fraction of the price, like name brand things that are just like very underpriced, um, like shockingly underpriced. And if you are like, if you are really into fashion, you do like to shop for clothes when you are traveling, it is a really fantastic option. These stores are the stores that I go to all the time. And even as a plus size woman, like I am able to find things in my size, which isn't always the case, especially when traveling. So if you are looking for like some really unique pieces that you get while you are traveling abroad, then like maybe consider these vintage shops and um, check out these three in particular. And, so as I mentioned, um, the Mira do, Mi, excuse me, the Miradoros, uh, which is viewpoints in Portugal, are everywhere. They're everywhere. They're all over the city because the city is covered in hills, which is a blessing and a curse <laughs> at the same time. Um, but the beauty of the city having so many hills is that we do have some really fantastic viewpoints. And people tend to just go to, Okay, so they go to Miradoro de Santa Luzia, which is the one that I mentioned just, just earlier. And then they also will go, I'm pretty sure it's called uh, Senor, Senora de Mont, which is the highest point in the city. Um, but if you want my honest opinion, yes, Santa Luzia is beautiful and you must see during a sunrise, but the Miradoro Mont is just like, mm -hmm, it's not my favorite. So what I did is I included a list of some of the best Miradoros in the city. So Miradoro de Graça um, actually has a fantastic cafe next to it that you can kind of sit at the cafe and enjoy the viewpoint. It's also a fantastic spot for uh, sunset. And then Miradoro Park Eduardo is um, 
it's in the middle of the city at the top of Marques Pombal. So Marques Pombal is like the center of the city. And at the very top is this park. And so you have this, this park that kind of slopes down and you get this sweeping view of Lisbon. And there's like these geometric hedges that cut through the park. And it's just a really, a really unique, unique way to see the city. It's also a beautiful photo spot. Um, it's it, and again, when I have friends come and visit me in the city, it's one of the places that I bring them to. And then these last three are all really great spots. A lot of local spots, um, Alcantara and Santa Catarina both have kiosks there. So if you do wanna like combine hanging out at a Miradoru and like getting a little bite to eat, those are the places to do it. But Miradorus are super popular. Hanging out at the kiosks by them are very popular with the Portuguese. And so you have to do it for yourself. <clears throat> Street art lovers, let me tell you, Lisbon is going to be one of your absolute favorite places. So personally for myself, I am obsessed with street art. I, I really adore it. I cannot draw to save my life. So I, I consider it to be like such a special artistry to see all of these unique styles that these artists bring to the city. And it kind of adds to the character of it. And so Lisbon is certainly not lacking in that department. It is everywhere here. They love the art. So they really do encourage artists often to like come and add different pieces. There's a bunch of artists that you'll see their pieces all over and they have such a distinct style that you can tell it's them. And so what I did was I included some places that have like really fantastic street art if that is something you're interested in. So Grasa, um, right underneath Miradoro de Grasa is a little pathway and it, it's what you see here on the left, but what it is, it's a, um, it's stairs that cut down into the neighborhood, but all along those stairs are different pieces of street art. Excuse me. So what the government did was they were like, okay, we don't want street art everywhere. However, we're willing to give you this stairway. And it's, it's a good size stairway. And they were like, we're willing to give you this space and you guys can add whatever you want to it. And so you'll see that there is art all over and all of these different styles. Like this is just a fraction of what you're gonna see just in that stairway alone. So if you are going to Miradora de Grasa, <clears throat> you can literally take the stairs right back down into city center and be able to get all of this like corridor of street art. And then there's also the train station tunnel and Parede. So this one is very like not well known. I randomly found out about it and I like have mentioned it to my friends and they're still like, oh no, we've never even heard about that. But there is a tunnel in the back of the train station at Parede. So again, if you are considering going to the beach, you can add this to your day, but it is a tunnel and it is um, an homage to Portuguese father music. So there's a portrait of Amalie Rodrigues and there's a bunch of different famous figures that are all painted in this particular tunnel. And it's super colorful, super beautiful. The first time I saw it, I was like, wait, <laughs> this is in Portugal? I had no idea. It blew my mind. And so I cannot recommend it enough. And then another place that you can see, um, that you can see um, some great street art is along the water over by the Caixa de Sodre, uh, boat station so you have the train station here and then directly behind it is the boat station which is where you pick up the ferry to go across um to Alameda and so if you walk along the water right next to that that ferry station then there are just murals all over all over like there it, it's just covered in art which is another um endearing thing about the city is that there is just so much art to find and you know even if you're just walking around you're bound to find something and then this last one here, Escadinhas de San Cristobal. I might be saying that last word wrong, but we're trying, we're learning. Uh, that one is, so those are actually, uh, there's a very famous Fadu picture uh, where it has a few different famous Fadu singers, but it's oftentimes like you'll see it in a ton of different postcards. You'll see it all over Instagram. You'll see it on a lot of different tourism pictures. Uh, but it's like a, it's like red and yellow and there's a girl and there's a man 
and there's um it's just a very well known area for the street art and i know a lot of people like come to the city wanting to see that one in particular so i just wanted to include that at the end rather than like you trying to like hunt down where to find it um if you type this into google it'll take you right to the, where the location is okay so now we're getting to the end um but i wanted to include some overlooked places that people tend again what I find is that like people will just stick to this like very rigid itinerary of what they want to see while they're in Lisbon and it's great it's it's fantastic it is a great way to see Portuguese culture but again like I feel like a lot of times people are missing a lot of the city um by not kind of like going to these other locations that like are kind of overlooked so the first one that I include is this museum that is has one of the best art collections I've seen in this bottom left hand this bottom yeah bottom left hand picture excuse me is uh the cafe right outside of it which gives a great view of some of the different monuments in Portugal so like people don't even realize that this cafe is right there and that like you can have this view while drinking your drink and this this here is a cider and I think it cost me maybe two euros i think so you know you're not spending a ton of money to try to like get these crazy lavish views like you're just going to the art museum for the afternoon and then stopping at the cafe after and like this is the view that you're treated with And then the famous convent, yeah, uh, church that was built at like the dawn of time with Lisbon, and it survived the fires, it survived the earthquake. But during that, the roof fell off, and so um, the roof fell off. And rather than repairing it, they just decided that they're going to pay homage to you know the the tenacity of the Portuguese and like being able to survive these disasters by leaving the roof off. And so now that they, now they hold special events in there. And there was this really fantastic um, event that I saw where they projected um, the most incredible visuals onto these walls along with traditional Portuguese music. And like, it like gave you an idea of like Portuguese history. They like visited different time periods but it was absolutely stunning. So it's called Lisbon Under the Stars. So if you're ever in town and you do hear that that is uh, playing at Convento do Carmo, please go. It was one of my most favorite things that I've ever done in the city. It is stunning. And then we have Estufa Fria, which basically means like cold greenhouse. <laughs> and that's this metal picture. It is this giant structure, giant building that is a massive greenhouse with multiple different rooms. There's different sculptures in there um, from famous Portuguese artists and famous international artists. And I think it costs maybe two euros to get inside. So even if it's like, um, like if it's like a rainy day and you need, to, you need something to do, like I would highly recommend visiting this spot. Again, it's massive. The, the different plants that you see in there, the different flowers, the chickens just roaming around uh, it, and like you honestly forget that you're like in the middle of this massive city and you feel like you're in a jungle it is just something special and then Alameda is actually the city that's right over the bridge so a lot of people tend to not go over the bridge which is totally fine but um Alameda offers some pretty incredible views of the city and um of the bridge and again like a fantastic photo spot and there's also this really fantastic restaurant called a uh, point final which is like final point again kind of touristy but it's just a really pretty place it's right at the edge of the water on on the other side um of the bridge and it's a great place to like have a meal during sunset so if you want like a romantic spot you're trying to impress your lady friend or your boyfriend, then like, please go to Ponce Final and Alameda, it's great. And then this last one here, this garden, I always mess the name up, uh, Gulbenkian. Please do not quote me on that. And please do not judge me for how poorly I'm pronouncing that. But um, another really great place, they have a ton of different trails. They have a cafe there, there's an art museum. It's definitely, 
I shouldn't say definitely, but it is a little bit out of the city. So people tend to not really go. But if you are looking for something unique, like this is a really great place to kind of like explore for an afternoon on like a nice spring day. You'll see a lot of different animals, a lot of different plants, a lot of different flowers. It's really beautiful. Um, this here is just a few different places to unwind. I know like, I know firsthand that going up and down those hills is not easy. So I'm a sucker for just being like, okay, I'm gonna take 10 minutes to sit on this bench, maybe read a book. And so I wanted to go ahead and include all of the different places. These are literally the places that I go to, um, that my friends go to, that, you know, family members recommend to me and the the nice thing about these places is that uh again it's just like a really great way to view what living in Lisbon looks like because you're not you're not seeing a ton of tourists you're not you know completely bombarded with you know all of the different people trying to like invite you into their restaurant it's just like life it's just what life looks like here and going to these parks, going to Avenue de la Libertad and like sitting on the benches with a book, it's just such a fantastic way to like almost get a taste of like what it would be like if you just lived in Lisbon because doesn't that just sound fantastic? Okay, so I'm just double checking on the time, making sure we're okay. So these are just a few businesses worth checking out. Um, o Galeria is this incredible gallery that is right at the bottom of Grasa. Um, it's actually not too far from where I said that street art corridor. So you, I'm not trying to build your itinerary or anything, but you could start at Miradoro de Grasa, look at the viewpoint, have a nice lunch at the cafe, walk down the corridor, see all the street art. And then at the bottom is this gallery. Um, and it's a really unique gallery. It's beautifully curated. It's a bunch of different Portuguese artists, but also again, some international artists, but the staff do such a fantastic job at curating it. And there's just really unique pieces. I personally have a few that have been in my backpack <laughs> that I have not got to hung up yet, but are, we're just like too great to pass up. So if you do want a really unique souvenir, you're looking to buy something for your home or for someone, then I would consider stopping here. Um, the next one in the middle is Livraia. Livra, Livra. <laughs> Sometimes I still trip up on the, on the words, guys. Um, but Livraia Simão which is a bookstore in Basha Chiado. It's literally the size. I said earlier that the wine shop was the size of a large closet. This is the size of a small closet. It's run by a father and son. They're the only ones that can really fit in there. And uh, they always help with fantastic recommendations. And it's a really unique spot to see. And the last spot that we have is Sayudad Flores. So I personally love this place. If you're looking for flowers in the city, I highly recommend this business. Um, or if you just like, if you wanna have a fun little shoot with a bouquet of flowers, they're very inexpensive. And the, the great thing that I love about them is that they deliver their bouquets on bicycles. So you'll just see them like riding through the city with like a bunch of bouquets in the back of their basket. It's, it's, really, it's really special. And then last, this, I, let me just double check, yep. So the last thing I wanted to include are just like helpful tips and places to look for information or like look for different events that are happening. So Fever Up over here on the left-hand side, it's similar to Groupon. So they offer a ton of different experiences for, for a fraction of the price. So I know where I just checked the other day and they have like candlelit classic music, um, shows where it's like set up in a beautiful venue and these musicians play with just candlelight um, illuminating them and I think the tickets were like 10 euros a pop when I went to Lisbon under the stars it was through fever up and I paid 10 euros for my ticket uh, it's really it's really great if you like want to find some things that maybe you wouldn't necessarily find on your own if you're just like visiting Lisbon for the first time um, and again super inexpensive super affordable Lisboa Secreta is um, right under fever up so it's an instagram account and they are constantly posting new things in the city they also have a blog and it's 
it's as thorough of a guide into the city as you can get. Like they really, I have to say, they really do a fantastic job at sharing unique places, like sharing places that you maybe wouldn't necessarily consider. So if you are planning your trip and you are looking to have like a local experience or something a little bit more unique than like that rigid itinerary I was talking about, definitely check them out. Um, and then these are just a few pieces of advice I wanted to give after living here for a while. Uh, the first being always use a multi bunkle ATM. I'm sure some of you guys have traveled through Europe and you've seen the Euronet ATMs. Do not use them here. Their conversion fees are terrible. Um, you're, they're, they're basically scamming you. <laughs> but uh, you just look for a multi bunkle ATM. It has a little symbol. It's like an M and a B. And I want to say it's like a blue square around it or a red square around it. But look for those ATMs because that's where you're going to want to take your money out from. Um, there is spots for free Wi-Fi. So on the buses, there's free Wi-Fis. On the trams, which is always shocking to people, uh, there's free Wi-Fi. McDonald's always has free Wi-Fi. And um, city center. So right in Procio, which is a, a like pretty much, again, right in city center, they do have free Wi-Fi. I wouldn't do anything involving your bank information just to be on the safe side. But you know, if you're like in a pinch and you're like looking for directions for something or like you need to order a car real quick or you just need to look, look something up, um, whether it be like a train time, things like that, you can hop on that Wi Fi and just be able to do that. Uh, public transportation, your ticket when you buy it. So, like, let's say you buy a ticket at the metro station, that ticket also covers the trams, um, metros, buses, ferries, and regional trains. So, like, the Kashkai's line to the beach, the one I was talking about earlier, that would be covered in that ticket. Um, if you were going to Synthra, I'm pretty sure that would be covered in that ticket. So those are just also things to consider. Um, again, the public transportation is incredible. I'm like a total old man and I love like just riding the bus. For, <laughs> I love like long bus rides where I can just like enjoy the city views. Like it's really thorough, it's really fantastic. Um, and again, super affordable. And then my last bit of advice is non-slip shoes. So I'm sure most of you have seen the pictures of like the mosaic tile work. Here they're called calçadas. Um, they are slippery. And by slippery, I mean like they are lethal. <laughs> like I give so much credit to people that I see wearing these crazy shoes that are like trooping down these streets, no problem. That, it, that is not an easy feat. I have seen many people, myself included, just completely fall. And um, so if you're looking for like stilettos, please leave those at home, like bring shoes that like have a good grip on the bottom, uh, just to be on the safe side because no one wants to fall and like break an ankle on their trip. Okay guys, so that is the end. I know it's a ton of information. Um, again, I, that, was, that was me restraining myself, <laughs> which clearly I didn't do very well, um, but I, I, Again, I wanna encourage you to follow any of these um, social channels and check out my blog. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. I'm constantly sharing new places that I'm finding in the city on my stories. So if you would like to find out all of the places that I like to visit and all of the places that I would recommend and really like see what it means to kind of like live in the city rather than just visiting, then I encourage you to follow me on Instagram and then I want to also thank the Nomadic Network for letting me do this for you guys. It is an absolute pleasure to talk about Portugal. I love it here. It means, again, means so much to me. So to be able to encourage other people to visit once it is safe again, really does mean the world to me. And I hope that each and every one of you guys get here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share and come back. Hi. Hey, Chantel. Hi, everyone. I was going to, oh my gosh, amazing presentation. Um, Chantel gave a presentation on Portu Portugal, I think, a few months ago. So if you weren't there, this was like a really good extension on that. Um, can you, do you mind actually pulling up the places to unwind slide again? I believe someone. Was yeah, definitely. That in the chat. Yeah. And for everyone else, I, I dropped Chantel's contact info in the chat a few times. So you can go ahead and find her on one of the many um, social media channels that she's on. This is so great. And I totally felt, felt you with like, oh, let me walk up this flight of stairs, but spend 10 minutes on this bench. I'm like, heck yeah, take a few pictures, oh, that's, take a breath. That was me. I, 
the other day, the other day I said to my wife, we went to the, we went to the grocery store and I was like, Oh, we need to stop and get an ice cream. I need a break. And she was like, we're literally three minutes from the house. And I'm like, no, 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 I need a break. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Oh, this is so cool. We have a lot of good questions that came in. And again, um, go ahead. Oh, I want to, okay. I want to hear all of them, but Leah, let me first say for anyone that like might need to leave early. Um, I did give Leah a link to a landing page that you can sign up for my newsletter. Um, tomorrow I'm going to send out this presentation so that you can check it out on your own. If you want to like write down any places that you do want to definitely explore or like save it in Google maps, you are able to get this presentation. You just have to sign up for the newsletter. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yes. So everyone on I dropped again her information in the chat at the very bottom you'll see the link for the newsletter so definitely sign up for that if you want to keep portugal tips for future reference and if um you are on desktop a way to save the chat i know there were so many helpful tips in the chat so if you're on desktop there's three dots at the bottom of the screen under the chat if you click those three dots and hit save chat the chat will save to your computer it only works if you're on desktop not on mobile so that's another way to save so thank you for that all right let's get into these amazing questions um we got quite a lot so josh yes, i'm so excited yeah. i already see some good ones yeah um josh is actually moving there so he has a couple questions um how bike friendly is lisbon and he's not gonna have a car but he's thinking of getting an e-bike to help get around quickly and do you have any bank um recommendations for someone moving to portugal from the states yeah okay so josh um one i haven't had a car for the entire duration of me living in portugal and it's been the best thing ever um again like there's always a way to get somewhere if you're looking to get there uh like I said, public transportation is really good. Like, even if you don't want to get an e-bike, like you realistically could get anywhere just by walking. Um, and you can take a bus anywhere, a train, like there's always a way to get somewhere. The, the city itself is very bike friendly. There are a ton of bikers out here. Um, there is like bike lanes down by the water. So you can take like really beautiful rides. However, I want to again, implore that this is like a very hilly, city so like if you're trying to work out those calves on the bike then like this is fantastic but please just keep that in mind when you're or like i would also recommend like maybe like exploring the city and like figuring out like what would be an ideal bike route because like i know when i first got here i didn't know the city very well so it was just like hill after hill after hill after hill but after spending more time here, like now I know like where to go so that like maybe my trip is all downhill or like maybe I'll only have one big hill that I have to go up. Uh, so again, just something to consider. All right. And then bank bank recommendations. Oh, yes, bank recommendations. So I actually need to um, transfer all my bank info. It's like something I've been putting off for quite some time. I have Charles Schwab. So Charles Schwab reimburse all of my ATM fees, even internationally. I don't pay any international um, fees. So if you are looking for something like that, I highly recommend Charles Schwab. Um, Satander is, I believe, a um, Spanish bank account, but we do have them in Portugal. They're also in the States. Um, I've considered personally to like get a Satander account just because it does like carry over into Portugal. Uh, but there are a few different options. Again, like everyone here use multi, uses Multibanco. Um, so it just whatever works best for you. But if you if you are looking for something that like you don't really have to like get an account here in Portugal, then I would recommend Charles Schwab. Super easy to sign up and get a Visa card. I mean, a debit card. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend. Um, Chantelle, I was saying in the chat, I wish Charles Schwab had affiliate links because the amount of times I've dropped Charles Schwab in a conversation with travelers. Like I could literally just be a Charles Schwab affiliate and that would be my life earning. <laughs> I, totally, I totally feel that. I'm always just like Charles Schwab, Charles yeah, Schwab. Charles Schwab. Like, so, everyone. <laughs> Charles Schwab is only available um, it, to US residents or people who have social security numbers. So um, if you're international, uh, it, it won't be an option for you. But like Chantal said, it sounds pretty easy um, to, you know, get money transferred, uh, find local banks. And there's some recommendations. Yeah. People are dropping recommendations in the 
chat as well. So for banks. All right. So Esther wanted to know what would an average meal cost at any of those restaurants that you recommended? Oh my goodness, guys, you're going to, it's going to blow your mind. It's practically nothing. They're practically giving the food away for free. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell people that. We're well, I don't Portugal. Yeah. Yeah. Portugal's not really giving food out. I'm sorry for lying <laughs> to you. Um, however, I mean like coming, like I, so I live in, in the States in Rhode Island. So like not too far outside of Boston. So like, I'm very used to those prices. And like, just to give you some perspective, like if I go out to breakfast with my wife, um, breakfast for us, like where we both get like a drink, a coffee, we each get a full meal and like maybe something to split that'll cost less than 20 euros. Um, meals here are, if you're going to local spots, meals are extremely inexpensive. Um, a lot of dishes are going to be like 10 euros, 12, maybe at most. And that's like kind of pricey in my opinion. Um, but you know, like we've had, I've gone out to fr with friends before COVID, unfortunately, um, and had like big seafood feasts and like, there's like seven or eight of us and it comes out to less than a hundred euros. And we're talking like course after course, bottle of wine after bottle of wine. And like, that's like a very common thing here. Mm -hmm. Oh it's my God. Very inexpensive. That's so good to know. Um, talking about, I'm going to sidebar relating prices to like Boston prices, what, how would you relate um, weather in Lisbon to, if you had to compare it to like a city in the A US? dream, but I had to compare it, it's my dreams. It's what my <laughs> dreams are made of. No, like I'm here, I'm right here. I'm here in the spring. Uh -huh. I'm here in the spring and it's like beautiful, it's a dry heat, so it doesn't get humid. Um, the temperature right now is between like 60 and 70 which in Celsius is looking it up on Google because I can't, after all this time, I still can't do it off the top of my head. 20s. Um, I mean, sorry, yeah. 15 to 20, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Around that. Um, in the summer, mm -hmm. it does, it does get to like, um, 80, like, like, um, 80 degrees between like 70 and 88 I want to say like some days can get really hot where you're like good lord it's hot uh but overall the climate is just fantastic it does get a lot of rain um in the in the springtime like we've had maybe two two and a half days in a row of rain but then we have six days of sun coming up so like it's just an ideal climate if if you're looking for something that's like not too hot not too cold. Um, it's fantastic. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, no humidity. That's, I like no humidity. Yeah, no humidity. It's a dry heat. So like, once you go in the shade, it's significantly cooler. It's a blessing. My hair is like, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I don't know how to act in humidity. I'm just like, my body's trying, like, doesn't know how to act. It's like, okay, cool down. How? I got to <laughs> go Florida. I'm like, oh my God, get me out of here. Like, how do people live in this? <laughs> oh man. Okay. So, um, Lynn read that Lisbon got super crowded pre COVID. So the best times to visit that balance good weather with less crowds. Okay. So I actually saw this question. I was hoping that we would do this one. Um, because it is a really good question. So Lisbon and Portugal itself is becoming a really big tourist destination. Again, like I've been coming here since I was a kid and like these past few trips, I've definitely realized like how many more people are here visiting in the city. Um, so if you do want an experience that maybe is not as crowded, I would recommend coming in the spring. The spring is the best weather. The spring is hands down the best weather it's like very agreeable. It's like beautiful, sunny, but breezy at the same time, which like can sometimes be missing in the summer. Uh, and then not only that, but a lot of the plants are blooming in the, in the city during the spring. So like for instance, um, maybe in like a week or two, there are trees all over the city. And when they bloom, they'll bloom like these beautiful lilac, um, they're not like cherry blossoms, but they kind of look like cherry blossoms, but they're like lot like beautiful lilac color. And so you'll turn onto a street and you just see lilac trees going down the entirety of the street. But it only lasts from like end of April to like maybe the first or second week of June. 
So like, it's a super small frame, but it's absolutely stunning. Oh, someone gave me the name. Martha, eh, Jacaradas. I don't know if I'm saying right, but I agree with Martha, it is beautiful. <laughs> it really is. Wow, all right. So springtime, springtime. Springtime, that's good, that's good. Um, okay, so Dana wants to know how feasible is Lisbon for someone in a wheelchair? So I've often thought of this because again, like so much of what I do is about like accessibility and like making travel accessible to people. However, if I'm speaking honestly, it is not the most accessible city. There are like the metros do have elevators most times. I can't always say that it's a definite. Um, so like if you are like trying to travel through public transportation, like buses have all of that, like um, the tram, I can't, I can't remember. I want to say I saw someone get on in a wheelchair once and I think like they have a ramp that comes down, but I don't want to, I don't want to like, like, don't quote me on that kind of thing. Um, but again, it is a lot of hills. So that is something to consider, but there's still so many beautiful things to see by the water, which is all flat. There's so many things to see in Basha Chiado, which is also flat. Like there's definitely options. So like, I don't want to deter anybody from being like, oh, well, like Lisbon won't work for me. Um, there it's just certain areas might be a little bit more difficult to access, but there are different options. Okay. All right. Great to know. And Rebecca had a question um, about using Captain instead of Uber. I hear she heard it was like the local Uber. So getting around. Okay, so the local Uber, the local Uber is actually Bolt, if we're talking guys. So let's talk about this. Yes, Rodney, that's what I'm talking about. I saw that come in. I use Bolt. <laughs> Bolt is where it's at. Honestly, some like I had to take a quick ride to to get a SIM card for my mobile Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi is the bane of my existence here. And I had to like shoot over to a place. Normally what would have cost me $6 in the States, it cost me a dollar 75. What? Um, I what? went over the, yeah. So when I went over the bridge to Alameda, there's like a, there's like a park on the other side and I always mess up the name, but it's where like, it's like the, it looks like Christ the Redeemer, but it's where that park is. Um, but I got picked up in a bolt to go across the bridge and like a 2020 Jaguar, like I got in the car and I was like, I do not belong in here. Like what, this man is going to regret letting me in this very nice vehicle of his. <laughs> um, but I paid, like my friend and I, we paid, I think like 17 euros to go across the bridge from where we were. And that that's like what, $20, 10 bucks for each of us. And like, I got to ride in a brand new Jaguar. Like it was awesome. So I highly recommend Bolt. All right. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm with everyone who's saying that Bolt is, is the best. Cause it is go Bolt. Run specials and give you 20% off. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I'll like open the app and they're like, we took $2 off. We, we took two euros off just cause. And I'm like, well, thank you Bolt. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Love that. All right. Actually, another question from Rebecca. Um, this is a wonderful question. Are there ways to support the local economy from the U.S.? Any good spots in the U.S. for Portuguese imports? Or like, what are your recommendations Ooh. for us at home? Like, I think L.A. has a massive port. No, I lied. We have a massive Portuguese bakery. <laughs> but like in other spots, <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, Portos is like the most famous bakery in California. <laughs> and it's Portuguese. But what I can love that. Home? Yeah. What can people do from home? Yeah. So like I, it depends where you're from. Um, like I, I grew up in Rhode Island with in like Rhode Island, Massachusetts has a huge Portuguese community. If anyone is from the New England area, like you already know. And like, there are a ton of different businesses, like small local businesses, Portuguese bakeries, Portuguese markets, um, that you can actually go and buy imported goods from Portugal or like buy sweet treats. And like, honestly, like so many of those families are immigrants that like came here, came from Portugal and are just trying to make a name for themselves. Like, so definitely go ahead and support them in that way. Uh, there are also a ton of Portuguese artists. If you do want to like support people that do live here in Portugal, um, it's worth, like I, I mentioned Olgaladia. So Olgaladia will showcase different artists. 
um, on their Instagram feed and you can like go directly to their website and like buy their prints. So that's also something to consider. Um, eat at your local Portuguese restaurant, um, buy Portuguese wine, <laughs> buy all of the goods. Right, I love that. Buy prints from O Galeria online. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And I can't believe I corrected myself. Porto's in LA is Cuban. <laughs> I got so excited. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Anyways, um, yeah, that's go okay. to the local Portuguese restaurant, like Chantel said, and just buy up all their goods. So that leads me into the next few questions about like, what's your favorite Portuguese wine? Um, is vegan and vegetarian food popular and common out there in Lisbon? Let's go back to food. <laughs> Um, so I do not have a favorite Portuguese wine, which is like <sighs> out here. Um, they take their wine very seriously, but I am like an old man where if I like sniff red wine, I have heartburn for three days. Um, so it just doesn't work for me <laughs> as much as I want it to. Um, however, there is, um, it, there's an almond liqueur out here called Amagrinha and it's like a very thick almond liqueur, but they mix it with like um it's like lemon seltzer almost and then they put a few limes in there and that's like my cocktail of choice like that is like primo but if if you are like if you are at a portuguese goods store and you are looking for good portuguese wine like alentejo is one of the most fantastic regions for wine um and also Douro is like full of vineyards so if you see that they're coming from either of those spots like it's more than likely going to be fantastic Right. And then the second question was vegan food, okay. vegan and vegetarian, huge out here right now, Ooh. ton of places popping up that offer vegan and vegetarian fares. Like it's on, it's very easy to find out here, which is also fantastic to say. If you go to like, if you go like both Porto and Lisbon are really good about being able to offer those um, those options, but yeah, you can definitely find them here okay. without a problem. Wonderful, that's so good to know. Um, and then Debbie had a last question. We'll take this last one. Any idea when Portugal might open up to American travel? Oh, Debbie, not soon enough if you ask me. Um, I know, so I know, um, they are allowing EU members in, um, like visitors were allowed back on the 15th, which is today. So if you're from the EU and you wanna visit, come visit. Um, I know that just from like when we just, we just traveled from the airport and they mentioned that. However, in terms of American citizens, I wish I had an answer for that. And I know you guys are dying for an answer, but I don't have it. I think, um, I think what will happen is now that so many people are getting vaccinated, maybe by the summer, people will be able to travel back here. But again, Portugal doesn't have as many vaccines. So now it's not necessarily a matter of like, oh, they're vaccinated so we can open the borders. They're like, we don't want to like endanger our health. Again, like Portugal did just come out of a second quarantine a few weeks ago. And so like, it's, it's, kind of like a very touchy subject because like they just don't have the resources to get everyone vaccinated like in the States. Um, so it's, it's definitely like a health safety type thing. So I'm gonna cross my fingers for the summer because I'm dying to get my mom out here. Like I'm absolutely dying to get her here. Uh, but again, it's just a matter of just being patient for a little bit longer, which nobody wants to hear, but <laughs> it's the best I can offer. But for the public health, you know, we'll do it. And so to support Portugal, make sure they're back at 100%, yeah. you know, we'll do it. So one last question, Nick wanted totally. to know the almond drink that you mentioned. Uh, I'm going to write it in the chat or if you wanted to like spell it out in the chat. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, let me see. I, how do I do everyone? I don't yeah. know. Okay, I think it's... I don't know if that's how you spell it. Let me double check it. Amagrinha. Let's see, guys. Amagrinha. Ah, there we go. I was missing an R. 
Okay, so it says I'm gonna act, I'm gonna, how do I do everybody on this chat? You have to change the- Oh, everyone, here we go. Okay. Yes, we got it. Amarinha. Yep. Amarinha. Almond drink, yum. Amagrinha, yep. Amagrinha, okay. Yeah, it's really tasty. And I don't even, I don't even like almond flavored things, but I'll, <laughs> I'll drink those things like they're going out of style. Yum. All right. I know. Now I'm going to go find one, but not at the Cuban bakery out here at the Portuguese bakery. <laughs> <laughs> with the with the Portuguese name, to be fair, Porto, like you would expect it would be okay, Portuguese. Okay, mistake. <laughs> it was an honest mistake. I oh, know. All right. Oh my gosh, Chantel, you are always such a ball of energy so much fun I know we could all talk about Portugal for like two weeks straight <laughs> but the next best thing Forever. we can do is go support yeah, honestly local Portuguese bake bakeries and you know visit once it's safe so thank you so much again for providing such a Please. fun and informational presentation everyone I'm gonna drop uh Chantel's information in the chat once again if you want her presentation or if you want to connect with her on any other platform and um there we go and so i you know this was wonderful and i'm just going to close out with a few slides so thank you everyone let's get this back up here thanks guys if you want the presentation don't forget to sign up for the newsletter yes please do that so nomadic network events while they're loading you'll see them appear on the screen um we have a partner event with wonderful next week we're not actually we're just helping to promote it but uh wonderful is all women focused travel so they're having a massive online event next week you can join and then on tuesday we have had to take a multi-year family trip through europe and we have some uh virtual happy hours coming up as well so our May book club is coming up in a few weeks, Wednesday, May 5th, Nomadic Matt himself will be hosting. And this is one where you can get off of mute and we can all ask Rolf Potts our questions um, and he will be there to answer them himself. So go ahead and grab Marco Polo Didn't Go There by Rolf Potts. You can use bookshop.org. That is our preferred bookseller. They do give uh, proceeds back to the local communities. So that's coming up on May 5th. And like I said, Nomadic Mat Plus Patreon is no longer. We are on members.nomadicmat.com. That's where you can find replays, personal stories, input on the content we created, free guides, et cetera, and access to this cool Facebook group where we can all help each other out with tips and tricks. So thank you all. This wouldn't be the same if it was just Chantelle and I talking about Portugal. So I wanted to thank each and every one of you for coming. Next time, bring a friend, come to our happy hours. We'll see you at the book club. And thank you again for being so engaged and for all your wonderful questions. And we'll see you all soon. We'll all meet up in Portugal. <laughs> yes, take please do. Yes, take Bye, care. Bye, guys. <laughs>